Hi guys, how are we all doing? Andy from Coastal Cushion Co here. Monday morning, start of a new week. I have a VW T5 in this week. It's having its two front seats, so it's a single driver's seat and a double uh, passenger seat. It has a middle row, a twin seat, a middle row of seats, and then a, a bed in the back, just a two cushion mattress. And it's been retrimmed in uh, VW tartan, so it's the golf uh, red tartan centre panel, so in the centre of, of the seats. The bolsters will be black Alcantara and then just a black automotive cloth around the, around the sides um, and the backs. So the first job with this is to strip it down. So I need to remove the headrest, all the plastic, the armrests, and then I can start to remove the cover. So normally I would cut out a set of T5 seat covers from the patterns that I already have. I've got a set here for the uh, single seat and a set for the double seat. Now, today I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you how you can cut out a set of covers using the cover that you've just removed from the seat. It takes me a bit longer now to do the job, but I'm going to help you out here and show you how I got to get these patterns. Now, obviously you won't be putting them on Mylar. You'll just be using the pieces from the original seat as patterns. I use Mylar because it's, it stores very well. It's got a very long life and it's easy to write on, easy to cut. And um, yeah, it's probably the best thing to use really. Some people use cardboard or hardboard to put the patterns on. If you want to do that, you can do, it's up to you. Um, if you're going to use them multiple times, then I'd advise you to put them onto something that you can use again and again and again to make your life easier. But I use Mylar. If I use hardboard or cardboard, I would have a hell of a lot of patterns to store. I do have a lot of patterns. I've probably got in excess of 100 patterns, maybe, maybe a lot more. I haven't counted, but 100 different seat patterns on something like hardboard or cardboard would take up a lot of room. So that's why I use Mylar. Um, this is obviously that big. Now, if it was on hardboard or cardboard, I couldn't roll it up. I would have to store them flat or on their edge. Preferably flat because um, then they wouldn't bend and get misshapen. But I would need a separate room just for the patterns. So, yeah, my life for me is, is the best solution. So anyway, I'm going to show you what you need to do to get the patterns to cut out and new set of seat covers. It's a bit of a boring process, but it's one that has to be done. Now, if the seat you're trying to pattern is in shocking condition, it's ripped, then 
that won't be a solution. So I'll leave a link um, in the description and on the screen uh, to how you can actually pattern the seat form if you don't have decent covers already. So I've now got the cover from the front driver's seat on the bench. I need to start taking it apart. So the first thing to take apart or to take off would be this plastic piece here. Once I've got past the back tack, I'm going to attach it to the bench via a pin. I'm going to use a brand new Stanley knife. I'm going to cut away the stitches. Because it's on the bench, I can put quite a lot of tension on the threads and just cut away the threads. This is the quickest way to do it. Move it along as I go. So the front part and the back part are different lengths, so you, you're not getting mixed up. So I'm just going to do the same thing, I'm going to unpick this piece. So that's the first piece off. What I'm going to do with it, I'm going to write on it that it's a V W T five seat. And it's the back border, and this is the top of it. So it's it's that way up. I've put a T on it. So I'm just going to slowly unpick all the cover. Now a good thing about these seats, the match mats are quite good. So I don't need to put any on, they're already there. I just need to keep on picking. Well this piece is a very big piece, as you can see. Now I don't want to cut this out as one big piece and sew it in as one big piece, so I'm going to split it. So here, where these little tucks are, you can see they put little tucks in, like little pleats, to make it more shaped. I'm going to split it there. And also, I need to find the centre. So centre is here. And here. Our first job is to split it in half. Because I've split it, I need to add a seam allowance, so I'll put in plus S A. So that means I'm going to add a seam allowance to this panel here. And when I split this, I'm going to do the same. So I've got a match mark there, so I'm going to use that match mark reference and then where the tuck is I'm going to put a little mark there I'm going to unpick this stitch in here so put on again the top and it's a B W, T, 5, front border, and this is a B, put an S there, so it's a seat, B, W, T, 5, seat, side, border, that with 
with those now. So that's all the borders done. Now I need to get rid of the bolsters off here. So the bolsters are going to be symmetrical as well. So I only need one of them. Now if you want you can save these pieces. Um, I generally don't, I generally just make my own up. Same again. Put some markings on it so it's forward that way and it's a V VW T5 seat and it's a side bolster. So I've ended up with one, two, three, four, five pieces as patterns. Obviously I've got two of these, one of these, one of these, and two of these. So the next thing we're going to do, I need to make these as flat as possible. Now to do that I'm going to use a steamer. Now I know most of you won't have a steamer at home. I've never tried using an iron, but it's possible that you can use an iron. Um, if you manage to use an iron, then leave a comment and let everyone know. You could possibly get away with it on a very gentle heat and just flatten it gently. But don't do it on this side of the vinyl. Always do it on this side of the vinyl. And test it on a piece that you're not going to use. So, obviously I've got two of these. One, two. One will be the pattern that I'm going to use, and one will be the test. And I'm just going to steam it flat. We're just trying to steam the seams flat more than anything else. So with this as well, I'm going to cut this in half. Well, this is symmetrical. Make sure that match mark is halfway. It's halfway. Put a line in it and cut it out. Now, because I've cut a piece in half, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a C here. I see the C means it's the center of a pattern so this is one half this is the other half this is the center line so that just means that I flip the pattern over and I draw in this half with this pattern if I kept all the patterns that I could fold in half or cut in half I'd have more patterns that I could deal with and um, so anything that I can cut in half and get rid of I do. Um, in fact, this is the same, isn't it? So that's top, that's centre. So this, done this wrong. This shouldn't have a seam allowance, it should have a centre. So a C and a C, meaning a centre line. So I flip this over to make it one piece. So I'll now put these to one side, make sure they're Lying flat when I do. And they can be used as patterns. So I need to do the same with the backrest part of the seat, which I've got on the bench at the minute. I'm not going to make you watch all that, it's exactly the same principle. Unpick it, mark up the patterns. If you want to split anything, split anything. I'm going to split this um, just to let you know. I'm going to split this border here. I'm going to split this border here, just like I did with the um, with the seat. But I'm going to, probably going to split it further down here. I don't want to split it right up at the top here. I want to split it here. So 
I'll just mark on where I'm going to split it, which will be right on a match mark. There we go. There we go. So when I when it comes to be sewn together, the match mark will line up with the seam. So I'll speak to you again um, when I split this apart and all the pattern pieces have been steamed out, and I'm ready to do the cutting. And I'll talk you through that. I'll see you in a bit. So I'm going to start drawing the patterns onto the the fabric. Um, Obviously you'll be using, if you're doing this, you'll be using um, the pieces that you've, <coughs> that you've already um, took apart from the seats as a pattern, but I'm gonna use the Mylar patterns that I've got. Just to make my life easier, but the principle is exactly the same. Just draw around the pattern and then put in the match marks, cut it out, job done. So fabric always has a direction. So everything is running that way towards the the roll of fabric so that would be forwards on the vehicle now this fabric is already formed back so i don't have to put any form on the back of it i always write on the back of the fabric uh, just as a rule if a, if it's a stripe or a pattern or something like that i'm going to match it up and you can't see the the pattern through the back of the fabric and that's the only time I will actually write on the on the face of the fabric. If you make any mistakes and you're writing on the back, it doesn't matter. If you make any mistakes and you're writing on the front, then you have to remove it. So it's always better to write on the back of the fabric if you can help it. If you can't, then you can't. You've just got to be very careful. So that's the pieces drawn out onto this fabric and I need to cut them out. Um, it's not all the pieces in total, it's just the ones that are coming out of this fabric. Things like the backs of the seats, the side borders and all the little other bits. Um, not done the headdress or armrest yet, they'll be done last. So I'll cut these out now and then move on to the Alcantara. So that's one piece cut out. Now what I'm actually going to do, just to give it a test, is, is use a hot knife. 
and just see how well it cuts out. Absolutely perfectly. So you would normally cut things out with a pair of scissors. Um, I would as well, if it's something that doesn't fray. Uh, vinyl, leather, things like that. Some fabrics don't fray because they've got a coating. This frays a little bit, not excessively, but I prefer not to have frayed edges. It just makes the next process, the sewing part, just a little bit easier when you don't have frayed edges to deal with. You've got a nice clean edge. So I'm going to use a hot knife. Um, if you don't know what a hot knife is, it's a, a knife that gets very hot. I'll just show you how hot it gets. There you go, it gets very, very hot, the blade. On synthetic fabrics, it, it seals the edge of the fabric. If this was a man, uh, an actual fabric, cotton, linen, something like that, then I wouldn't be able to do this. It wouldn't, it wouldn't cut through and it wouldn't seal the edge either. So because this is synthetic, I can use a hot knife. Um, so that's what I'm going to do, but you will use a pair of scissors unless you have a hot knife. So that's all those pieces cut out. The next part is the Alcantara. And it's getting a little bit late now at night. So I'll cut those out in the morning and the tartan centre panels as well. And then we should start sewing tomorrow afternoon. By the end of the day, I should have something sewn together. So I'll see you then.
So that's all the pieces of Alcantara cut for both front passenger and driver's seat. I need to cut the uh, match marks in and then foam back them and then all I need to do is cut the centre panels out for um, both seats from the Golf Tartan and then I can start sewing them together. So I'll cut the notches in first and then foam back them. So I've now got the foam that I'm going to back the uh, panels with. Um, this is just an offcut of headlining fabric, so it's a, it's a nylon headlining fabric with a foam backing. Uh, it's just an offcut, so that's what I'm going to use. Um, you can buy scrim foam, scrim foam, a thin piece of foam with a scrim backing. Scrim is just a generic term for a very open woven fabric. I'm just going to use headlining fabric for this because uh, it's what I have lying about and it will go to waste if I don't use it. So I've got to be very careful when I'm gluing this. I don't want to spray this way like that. I want to spray straight over the top. If I spray this way, there's a chance that I might blow the fabric up and get glue underneath it, which I don't want to do. Obviously, if I get glue underneath the fabric, then it's ruined. So glue from right above. And I'm just putting a light coat on. I just want it to tack down to the foam. Doesn't have to be heavily stuck down. This is just a standard contact adhesive. I'm just gently going to lay them on. Don't want to actually play about with it. Now I don't want to touch them with my fingertips because my fingertips potentially have glue on. So I'm going to use the back of my hands just to lightly push down. So I'm just going to spray some silicone spray onto the scissors. This will stop the glue sticking to the scissors. So as you can see, it's not completely glued down, it's just lightly tacked down, just to hold it in place. So now it's time to start quitting out the check fabric. Um, as a general rule, I do not write on the correct side of the fabric. I always try and do it on the back of the fabric, but because this is a check and I need to line the checks up with each piece, um, I have no choice, so I have to write on the good side of the fabric. Um, I am going to use a white fabric pencil. It is removable. Um, don't use a Marga pen or a Biro or anything like that if you want to write on the good side of the fabric, because if you make a mistake, then it's not removable. So let's get started with this one. So I'm going to use, I want these two 
red stripes to be kind of even in the in the center and with these two as well so i'm going to use this third or first line from the um from the left as a guide and the center point on the actual piece that i've removed i'm just going to line it up so I'm pin that there then I'm going to do the same. The centre mark here at the back, I'm going to put that on the same spot. So that is now in place. So this is a straight line. It might not look it because it's wobbly, but that's because it's had years of being fitted. This has got a slight curve in it, in the front edge. Let me put the match marks in. So one there, obviously one there. The line where the pocket is sewn in. Same there. Same again, line where the pocket is stitched in. Has another match mark here, and one there. I'm going to put my centre line in. I can remove that now. Let's redraw this line in now. Just makes it a little bit easy to see. I'm going to cut that out straight away. I'm not going to wait. Just so I don't lose the lines. all the match marks in straight away. So the same again with the backrest. Now it's very important that you get these in the right orientation. So this is the top of the backrest, this is the bottom where it meets the seat and then the seat went this way. And put the match marks in. Now with the double seat, I have measurements here. So that's the measurements for the center panel on the backrest part. And these are the measurements for the center panel on the seat part. Now this piece has been sat around in the workshop for a couple of years now. So it's a little bit dusty that'll clean off so this is the rest of the fabric that I turned up today if you ever order some fabric online or from wherever and it turns up don't use a Stanley knife on it I did work with somebody who opened um, a roll of Alcantara with a Stanley knife and cut through quite a lot of it so a bit of an expensive mistake so all the pieces are now cut out and ready to sew together the first things I'm going to sort together are the borders. So I've got the backrest border and the side border. They both consist of three pieces. So I'll sew these together first. So this is the top. I'll just lay them out so they're going the right way. That's that side. That's that side. So.
And now I'll do the seat ones next. So that's the top. And now I need to sew the pockets onto the tartan fabric. So the tartan fabric's here. I've done a line on the fabric where the pocket goes and I've put a little bit of double-sided tape on them. So I've made the pockets up. You can use the pockets that, uh, that come off the seats, but I have loads of scrap fabric that I make things like pockets up with. So this just makes life easier using double-sided tape. You don't have to, but it just stops it moving. So I'm going to put the pocket on to the tape. That one. And I'm going to sew all the way from the end. Now I'm using the actual width of the, the edge of the foot to run alongside the pocket so the stitch line will be even. That's one pocket. Roll the piece off. I don't want to crease it. When something is fold back and you fold it, you potentially are going to put a crease in it. You can remove the crease by, by steaming, but it's always better to not have the crease there in the first place. And that's the two pockets sewn on. So now it's time to sew the bolsters on. And it has another pocket that needs sewing on here. So I'll sew the pocket on while I'm sewing the bolster on at the same time. So the length is that there, so it stops where this other pocket is sewn on. Now you can use the ones that come off the seats, like I said. So when it comes to things like this where you've got a curve, what I do is I'll sew it up to there, I'll leave the needle in, lift the foot up and then turn the fabric. And that's one bolster on. So I'll do the other side. So I'll start from the back this time. I always like to sew things the same way. So the bolsters always go on top of the um, centre panel. So I'm just turning the fabric. And I want to stop the stitch right along this stitch line here. Turn. I'm just going to do one stitch, pocket on, and then cut the pocket to length. Now if you find yourself a tiny bit short, you can always just give it a gentle pull. Um, don't yank on it. If you're going to pull anything, pull it quite evenly. Pull it right from the end. And that's both bolsters sewn on. Now I always trim the ends a little bit just to get rid of some bulk. So that's the seat part done. So on the backrest it has this piece attached to it. Now it's curved over time so I have to straighten it when I put it on. I still use the double sided tape and that will start right at the very end. Now I already have a stitch line here that I can follow. So I'm just going to try and sew straight through the stitch line. So the backrest bolsters are going to do the same way, but they have these pieces 
got a sole on and the match mark should line up so that's a match mark that's a match mark yeah so the match marks on here will tell you um, which way the sole on so make sure my match marks line up the match marks lines up now and that match mark there you can see it is where the end of this should be and that falls spot on find the first match mark which is there and that's the backrest face sewn together and the next piece is the back part to the seat so it's this part here so this goes on the back of the seat here. So at this point, just make sure the cover fits nicely. So everything seems to fit okay there. Do it before you saw the border on, because if you do it after you saw the border on, then you're into taking the border off. So oh, the border goes that way like that. So that's my starting point. And I'm just making sure this seam falls in the right place. What falls on the match mark? And then we've got the border sewn on. So again, I'm going to check it against the foam. And that's going to fit nice. It's always nice to just keep checking as you go along. The last thing you want to do is sew everything together and realise that you've made something a little bit too big, which is better than making it too small. So we'll be absolutely perfect with that. So the last thing to go onto this is the plastic strip. Now the plastic strip is quite a stiff plastic and you may find your machine, if you're using a standard domestic machine, is not going to sew through this. So the alternative is to add, so the alternative is to add an inch or so to the bottom of the border, so an inch extra, put a fold on it to create a pocket and insert a piece of rope or wire and then you can use it like a draw cord and you can tighten the seat up like that. It'll do the job, it won't be perfect but it will still attach it to the seat and you should be okay. But my machine will go through this, not a problem. So it gets sewn on to the right side of the fabric so the flat bit is facing down. And with things like plastic, I always sew larger stitches. And there's also little marks on the plastic strip which tell you where you are there, the light match marks. So this one here goes in the center line So that's now ready to be fitted. 
I'm going to sew the backrest together first before I fit this. Once I've sewn the backrest, I'll do the fitting. So I'm going to sew a hem onto this part here. So I'll put a few little nicks in so I can turn the fabric over. Now it's not actually going to be seen this, but it's always nice to have a hem there. So sometimes you might find that one of the match marks, like here, that lines up there. This one doesn't line up, but the next one does. So ignore this, it might just be a case of when you've drawn it out on the fabric, you've slightly drawn it out wrong. Um, but just go with the match marks that, that do line up. Don't try and stretch this one in because then this one will be wrong. Um, the one where the seam is, is perfect as well. So obviously one of these was probably marked closer towards this way and this was probably marked further away. So then you create a big gap. So now I need to sew this to the back. I'm going to do first, I'm just going to, where this is folded here, I'm just going to put the fold in and just put a couple of stitches across it. And the same on this side. Let's put a couple of stitches across it. We don't start all the way on the end here, we start at this first match mark. So that went in really nicely. So all we've got to do now is to sew the two plastic pieces onto um, the bottoms of the back and the bottom of the face or the front of the, the seat cover. Now, if you can't sew through the plastic, then there's a way around this. You can put a zip in. Um, if you do put a zip in, then the best thing to do, oops, excuse me. Then the best thing to do is put a, a longer zip than this gap. So if you add two or three inches to each end of this size, then when it comes to zipping it up, it makes life much easier. If you end up with um, putting a zip in that is the right size, then you'll probably struggle joining the zip together and getting it to zip up. So having a little bit of a tail on the end of each side of the zip means that you can then zip it up easier. Um, I use a continuous zip, just comes on a, on a big roll and you can open it up and you can slide the slider on. You can slide the slider onto the zip and then join it together and zip it up. You don't want to get a um, a closed ended zip like the ones that's on a, on a jacket, you want an open ended zip. Um, a good haberdasher will sell you an open ended zip in whatever length you want, they'll cut it to length for you off a roll and sell you some sliders. Um, it's probably the easiest way to do it. You can also use Velcro to join these together, but it's not quite as secure. The zip is, is a better way to do it. A lot of, of, a lot of seat covers are zipped on in places, so it's not an issue, it's not like you're doing anything that's out of the ordinary for car seat covers. But yeah, once you've slid the zip on, slide the slider all the way up the end, 
and just burn the ends of the zip. If it's a plastic zip, you can just burn the ends and that will seal the ends then. Tuck them in so they're out of the way and then it's done. So I forgot to set the camera off before I fitted this cover. I'm not going to take it off and refit it. Um, it's the same as a double seat. Everything goes together the same way. So I'll make sure I film that one and then you can just look at that. But it is, it is the same, just a bigger seat. So that's the last part of that um, job done. So I'm going to give the customer a ring and tell him to come pick his van up.